Okay, so we're going to talk about triggers, schedules, uh, filters, and post send actions. And these are all the um, four things that are related to uh, when an email gets delivered and who it gets e delivered to in an automated sequence. Okay, so we have touched on triggers. We 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 quickly went over all the triggers uh, in the in the single automated email module. But what I'm going to do is just going to quickly go over that again. Uh, so if we look at the triggers, we've got um, so the first options we've got is workflow activity. And none of these can be set as the first trigger for the first email in the sequence, okay? So we'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, so what we can do is we can have other things trigger this sequence off. So if people purchase any product from our store, it can trigger it. If people purchase a specific product in our store, so if we want to give somebody, say, a user manual for a product, uh, or give somebody some sort of like training videos in a sequence, uh, you know, day one, day, day, day two, day three, getting to know your product, uh, using this function, using that function, uh, look at the things that people have done with this product in the past. You know, we can do a, a sequence dedicated to a for a specific product. And if you've done, say, an online course and it's going to be delivered via email, you know, if we drip feed in information, it could be a six week get fit course. You know, people purchase that product and then the email sequence that's then delivered related to that product. Um, we can have it purchase product from a specific category. So if you sell books, you know, and somebody orders, or if you sell stationery and somebody has ordered uh, books from you or notepads, then when when they buy something like that, you can send an, an, an email sequence that says, do you know about our other products? Here's our range on pens, here's our range on uh, paints, here's our range on other stationary and equipment as well. So we can create a sequence for that. Um, if a contact, if we have contacts on our list that haven't bit, purchased a product from a store, we can have that. If somebody's put something in their uh, cart or checkout on your store, but then abandons it, doesn't pay for it, walks away, we can target them with, uh, with, with an abandoned cart email, which is really good for some sort of, for some e-commerce platforms. Uh, and we've got email retargeting. Um, yeah, if somebody's browsing your store and walks away, uh, we can target them as well. Okay, these two require an e-commerce integration, which I haven't got set up on this uh, list at the moment. Campaign activity. So this is related to what, what actions people take on a campaign. Um, so if we've created a campaign and sent it to someone, we might want to send a follow-up email automatically a couple of days later. So we create a normal, regular email. Uh, send it to a specific bunch of people on our list, and then we send, set up an automated email straight afterwards, uh, put a delay on it for a couple of days, um, select the trigger of sent campaign, and those people who have been sent a campaign, uh, after the delay, they'll, just, they'll start getting their sequence. And then we can target people who opened the specific campaign or didn't open the specific campaign. So if they did open it, we can say, you know, what did you think of the, the information? Um, if they didn't open it, we can chase them up and say, hey, we noticed you didn't open this email. We don't want you to miss out on this opportunity. Here's that offer again in case you missed it. Uh, we can have triggers based on if somebody clicks a link on the campaign. So if you have three links or, or some links in there uh, going to your website, we can have an automated trigger, a trigger to, a trigger to start an automated sequence. Uh, based on somebody clicking on that link. We can also have it where they've not clicked on a link. Say, hey, we sent you this information. We noticed you didn't go to the website. Uh, we just wanted to send you this information again in case you didn't have time or forgot about it. Or we can even have one where there's a specific link clicked in the campaign. So we could run like a, maybe a poll or we could have three products in there. So say, you know, hey, would you be interested in either of these three products? We've got an ebook, we've got a video. We've got a webinar that you can watch, um, and then if somebody picks the ebook, you know we can actually have a specific link click campaign automated sequence start on the first email that would contain the ebook. Uh, if you had a video, then 
you know, you'd have another one. Uh, so if somebody clicked on that link, it would trigger an automation. The first email would go out and it would contain a link to the video. And a third one, obviously, the webinar so it could be another video, it would be the same thing, but it'd be a third uh, automated sequence that would be triggered by somebody clicking specifically on that link in that email. Okay. Audience management. So we've got uh, a manual ad. So when somebody's manually added to a workflow, um, and a workflow is an automated automated sequence. When somebody's manually added to the workflow, we can have that as a trigger. Uh, so we just have, in order to get that going, we'd have to manually add the people we want into that automation. Um, so it would be a manual start up, but the rest of the automation would be uh, automatic. Uh, sign up, we kind of already looked at. So when in it, whenever anybody just signs up for your audience, um, it will trigger a, a, an automation. And the, the, easy, the sim most simple example of that is the welcome automated email that just goes out to anybody who signs up for your list, no matter where they sign up or what offer they sign up for. Uh, changes in the subscriber's audience field. So if you cast your mind back, we did a um, an embedded form with a hidden text field. Okay, so we could put in a sign up source um, specifically for wherever the form is. You could have four different forms on your website. You could have a, a source uh, for where, what page it's on, whether it's on your home page, contact page, blog page, whatever. Or you could even use that to deliver um, an offer. So the, the, the hidden text field could be offer A. Um, and what we can do is you know, when somebody signs up and that text field has changed, so let's say they've already got offer A and now they go and get offer B, then that hidden text field will have changed in their details and that will trigger an automation sequence to go out to them. Okay. Joins group, that's the example we used um, in the single automated email and the automated sequences. Uh, basically, we when we have sign somebody sign up, we have them go into a, a group and, um, and yeah, it's... Um, it, it triggers the sequence off for them so they can get the, the whatever they've opted in for. Uh, leaves a group, so I'm not really sure of any really good examples off the top of my head of why you'd use this one, but maybe um, maybe you could have a membership. So paying members are in a specific group called members. And if somebody doesn't pay, um, their subscription fees and there's, there's not really any easy way depending on what you might have for a platform um or you might have to do it manually if you can have if you do have a platform that could automate it then it could automatically put you could put a criteria that if somebody doesn't pay um, it actually updates their information and removes them from a specific group or your membership group or if you have like a, an administration where you go over it monthly uh, you look at who's paid, you look at who's in the group, and anybody who hasn't paid, you manually remove them from your group in MailChimp. And then that way, when they leave the group, an automatic email will go out to say, hey, you've been removed from the group because you haven't paid your membership fees. Please get in touch with us at such and such a number uh, to get back up and running again. So that could be an automatic email for leaving the group as a, as a, as a, as a brief example, okay? Added a tag, so if you tag one of your users, we've been over tags, if you add a tag to one of your users, that can trigger an automation as well. Um, okay, and then we've got this last tab, which is integrations, which is related to the API. Um, and when you do that, you, you, you kind of, you're looking at sort of quite more in-depth stuff, which is beyond the scope of this course, really. Okay, so. Right, so I am going to leave this one as joins a group and I am going to do it, I want to do it immediately on joining offer A, okay? And then I'm going to update the trigger. Okay, so that is triggers. Oh, the one we didn't look at uh, and we'll go back to and we'll do this in the second email automation now. Uh, so we're going to click on edit trigger. And as we can see, its default is a subscriber has sent the previous automation email in your series, My Custom Workflow. Let me just exit that. So this is um, My Custom Workflow. So basically, 
people who were sent the previous email, which is called my custom flip workflow, that is the trigger for the second email, okay? So what we don't need to do is um, we don't need to change that to add it to the group and then tell it to wait a day. And then the next one, add it to a group, tell it to wait two days. Uh, that, that won't work, okay? Basically, if the previous email in the sequence is sent, which is this one, then it will wait one day and it will trigger the second email, okay? Now, if we look at those triggers again, um, the first tab we didn't look at because it wasn't available for the first email. Now it is available for the second email. The options we've got, previous email sent, so once it's waited for the delay, then it will send, it will trigger the next email, okay? Oh. Uh, previous email opened, so if the previous email was sent and the user opened it, then after the delay, it will trigger the next email, but only if they open it. If they didn't open it, then the sequence ends there because the conditions are not true, okay? If the, it's not opened, it, it, it doesn't carry on until they open it. If the previous email was not opened and the delay has passed, then it will send the second email. Now we could do that to say, hey, we sent you an email on such and such. We noticed you didn't open it. Um, we wanted to send you the email again and put the same information in there. If they, if the previous email was opened, then it won't send out the second email because the conditions aren't correct for the trigger, okay? Um, and then again, just like we've got in campaign activity, uh, we've got clicked, not clicked, specific link clicked, okay? Uh, exactly the same, previous email, if a link was clicked, it will send out the second email after the delay. Um, previous email, there was no links clicked, it will send out the email after the delay. And if a specific link was clicked, it will, it will send out the second email after the delay. But if the conditions aren't true, it doesn't carry on, the sequence ends, it's dead, okay? So they are triggers. Um, and we can see our delays between, you know, for the next emails, we've got a choice. Uh, now, depending on the trigger, actually. So as soon as we, we left it on previous email open, so as soon as somebody um, opens the, the email, then we could immediately send out the next email in the list without a wait. It could just be, you know, the only waiting period that we've got is between the sending and somebody opening the email. Um, and then once they open the email, they get the next one straight away, okay? Or we can put a delay in there for hours, days, and weeks. I'm going to put this back to previous email sent. Now, when it's got previous email sent, um, we don't have the immediate option because if it is sent, if the previous email is sent immediately and then you know that, that goes out almost straight away, then the second email is sent almost immediately and the third email is sent almost immediately. And basically all the emails are sent pretty much immediately. There's no delay set in that at all. So it has to have some sort of manual delay in there. And the minimum it is, is, uh, is, is one hour is the shortest one we can do, okay? Okay, so that's triggers. And then basically, let me just move me out of the way. We could add a third email, and then we could you know, automatically set to one day after subscribers have sent the previous email. Um, you know, we don't, we, this relates to this one, this relates to this one. When it says previous email, that's that one. When it says previous email here, that's that one, okay? I've seen some people where they think um, that this trigger should be two, you know, if they're doing a daily email, then this trigger should be two days after. Um, because they think it's two days after the first one. It's not, it's two days after the previous one, okay? So in this condition, when somebody signs up, they'll immediately get this email. And if it's a Monday, then at four o'clock, they'll get this email at Monday at four o'clock, roughly, um, as quick as it takes to process it. And then one day later, they'll get this on Tuesday at four o'clock. And then this one will come through Wednesday at four o'clock. 
and then you know if you had a fourth one with one day after it would be thursday at four o'clock and so on and so forth okay so that's how triggers work they trigger the email to be sent now what we've got is this schedule section here and currently set to every day all day which means it's got no restriction about when it's going to be sent as soon as the trigger um is active it will send it out as soon as it can because there is no restriction on when the email gets sent okay now we can change that um I'm just gonna cancel that so what we could do is we could send we could change this to only ever go out on a monday and we can change the time to send at a specific time or only send between certain times so let's say if we want to send it between working hours of a day uh, we could send it between nine and five yeah okay and save schedule now what we've got here is um somebody signs up for something on our form and it's triggered they they, they go in they sign up for offer a it's triggered this e email goes out immediately okay this is, could be the welcome email it's got the offer in it okay now it could be that you're offering say a three-week fitness course uh, or two let's call it a two-week fitness course um and in here you say right thank you for signing up um we're going to get started on monday okay um i'm going to send you the first bit, bit of information out on monday and i want you to work on that all week and then the next week we want something else to go okay so somebody signs up on a wednesday uh, for this offer uh, the welcome email goes out immediately it says when we're going to start it's going to start on monday okay so this goes out wednesday at 4 p.m yeah and then once that's sent out this email one day later which would be tuesday at 4 p.m it gets triggered okay the email gets triggered but it does not get sent okay it gets triggered thursday and then it basically waits for this condition to be true it's waiting for it to be a monday and it's waiting for it to be between 9 and 5 p.m okay so although it's triggered on the thursday it's then waiting so it's like it's in a queue and waiting so friday passes saturday passes sunday passes it gets to monday morning it reaches nine o'clock in the morning and it goes hey i can actually send this now and it will send it between um it will probably send it sometime around 9 a.m okay so that's how we can use scheduling uh, to get emails to go out a specific time um maybe you do weekly classes maybe you do weekly motivation um uh, monday morning um quotes or something like that so you only ever want these emails to go out on a monday right so that's how we do it and also if somebody actually signs up for this on a monday at say um see what we could actually do is we could change this down to the minimum uh, and make it wait one hour in which case somebody signs up for this at, on a monday at 3 30 pm okay the welcome email goes out straight away because it's got a trigger and no schedule restrictions immediate immediate trigger no schedule restrictions so that will go out straight away the next one will wait one hour uh, so it'll be 4 30 pm and email two will be triggered it'll be 4 30 pm on a monday it will be triggered and it'll be looking to see if it's within schedule to be delivered it's monday it's 4 30 pm it is within the schedule so that email will be sent so somebody signs up 3 30 they get the welcome email at 4 30 they get the first monday email okay so now they're into their weekly sequence and then all we have to do on the last one um for email three for the for the next week's information is simply change the trigger to one week okay so if somebody signs up at 4 th at 3 30 they get the welcome on a monday um an hour later at 4 30 pm because it's within schedule they get the, the week one email and then because they have to wait because the triggers a week 
this one doesn't get triggered until a week after this one. So this was 4.30 on a Monday. Uh, so this is 4.30 on the next Monday. We don't have to put a schedule in for that one because it's literally going to wait a week for the, for the trigger anyway. And we can carry on. If we're doing 52 weeks, we put 52 emails and each one just needs to be a week after subscribers have sent the previous email. Um, and that's how we can use scheduling to our advantage um, so that we can have an automation, but the emails actually only go out at specific times of the day or specific days. Okay. Now, when it comes to filter by segment or tag, what we can do is if we're offering, say, a markers and sequence here, so this could be a welcome email, and then we could have just a weekly email that just promotes services or promotes products or, or something like that. Okay, so we are promoting, so somebody takes up the offer, the first offer, Okay, the first email goes out containing the offer. If it's an ebook, it's got the PDF file attached to it. But also in that email, we'll say, hey, um, have you seen our amazing course that we do? Uh, we run this course, and we'd love to get you on it. Uh, you know, please, you know, sign up for this course. And then there's a link to your website where people can buy your course. Um, and then you might have a sequence somewhere that when somebody buys that course, they get a welcome email, they get tagged or they go into a group to say that they're on a course. OK, so, so they could have a, you could have a group called students or you could have a tag called students. Um, in which case, if you are sending out a bunch of emails every week for, say, five weeks that says, hey, come by my course, hey, come by my course, hey, come by my course. If they actually sign up for the course on the first one, then you don't want to bombard them a week later with a with an email to say, hey, come by my course, and another one a week later after that saying, hey, come by my course, and another one after that saying, hey, come by my course. So what we want to do is actually filter these emails to people who haven't actually bought that course or haven't done the criteria that you want them to do, okay? So what we can do is, um, in the first email, we've got, hey, buy my course. So in the second one we want to add a segment uh, choose a segment or tag and then we want to choose let's see so we we've worked out how to create segments and we've worked out how to apply tags to our um uh to our to our contacts okay uh, so we can choose a segment that we've saved that's, that's applicable um, so we could have a segment that says not students uh, or we could have tags that uh, that are relevant you know if, if if the tag student then we don't want to send it to students we want to send it to people who are not students uh, so what we want what we could do is go down some the contacts match the following conditions and just like we had when we looked at uh, segmentation and saving segments we've got this criteria again whereby um, we can pick people out um, and, and isolate them, pick on, pick them or isolate them from our communications, okay? So we could have in here, we could have a group um, and let's say group, let's say offer B is the course. People have signed up uh, and they're in the course on offer B. So what we want to do is actually exclude them um, from our uh, further automation emails. Uh, so. So, yeah, so the people we pick in here will be added to the queue, okay? Uh, so the people are not of, none of Offer B. If Offer B is the course, we want to target people who are not in the course, okay? So we want to target people who are not in Offer B group. I hope that makes sense, yeah? Um, and then we can save the segment. And now what that will do, uh, so the, the, the welcome email will go out. Let's say the welcome email just contains the offer. And then the first email that, that would go out to people uh, maybe a day later would contain 
a link to buy the course. Now, if somebody's already previously signed up for the course anyway, and they're already on our list and have gone through the course motions, then again, you don't want to target them with this email. So, um, so yeah, if I mean, we, we could, if we offered it in here as well, and people didn't take it up, um, we could use the trigger, you know, did not click link. But if people are already on our list who are, um, who have taken the course and then they got this free offer, they've, they've signed up for that, then yes, they won't click on that link because they've taken the course. And because they didn't click on the link, you'll still be sending information to them to say, hey, come buy my course. So what we want to do is use the filter uh, section, okay? So we're filtering out people who haven't taken the course, um, which we call an offer B. And people who haven't taken the course will get this email, okay? And then if the further, e if the further, e if the further email again has the same thing about um you know come by my course and uh, we don't want to bombard people so basically if this email wasn't sent because it wasn't applicable because they are a student or have been a student then this email won't be sent either because the trigger is one week after subscribers are sent the previous email so if it's not been sent this one won't be sent either that's it it's it's if this one doesn't get sent to somebody then the sequence is dead if it does get sent to somebody, then it continues, okay? So again, right, if somebody gets this email and they click on the link on that one to buy the course, then what we want to do is prevent them getting this email, okay? So they were sent this email, so a week later they are going to get this email, but if they bought the course from this email, then we don't want them to get this email. So again, we need to add a filter uh, by segment and again we're going to choose the segment uh, contacts match the following conditions uh, group is non off b same segment okay so it might have been true here they got that email they didn't buy they hadn't bought the course they got this email they clicked on the link they bought the course okay so now this email then gets triggered a week later it looks at the conditions is that person in that course group yes they are then I'm not going to send them this email, okay? And for every email you create in your sequence, you need to consider the conditions of who it's going to go to. If they take, if you've got a marketing sequence where you're offering things, then really you don't want to be sending people informational things that they've already bought from you. You're pestering them, it's not relevant. And we use filters and conditions uh, to not um, uh, to, to not send those people that relevant that information again that's irrelevant to them. Okay, so we put the conditions in there. Okay, so the last thing to to look at in this module is the post send action. Now, post send actions can be really really handy. Um, if we look at the options available to us, we can. Update merge fields, so we can update things like if we had, um, so if we had the hidden field in there, which we haven't got on this list, we had the hidden field of sign up source, we can actually update that as well. Um, so if, if we use that for certain offers, so if it was, um, you know, offer A, we could update it to say offer B, and then it would trigger the automation for offer B after they've received the email. So what it basically does is, once this email has been sent, it will take this action on the subscriber uh, that we set. So we can up update the field, update the merge field. We can actually archive them from the audience, so they're not actually in, in the audience anymore. Or they're, they're in the background, but they're archived and inactive. We can force them to unsubscribe from the list. We can make them join a group. We can make them leave a group. We can add a tag or remove a tag, okay? So these post send actions can be really, really handy for, uh, I like to use them a lot for adding tags to people. I like to use a lot of tags so as I can easily see when I'm looking at my audience list here, 
Uh, let's just go to the audience list. Short menu here, but um, I can actually see by tags really easy what people have, have gotten up to in my list. So if I've got a store and I have automatic emails going out when people buy a product, I can have um, an ad tag and I can have the product name there so that I know when I look at the list um, that this person has bought um, test A. Or I can see that this person um, has an interest in size six shoes, they could possibly wear size six shoes. It might not be for them, but you know, it, it, it could be that they've ordered a pair of size six shoes, so I'll tag them with size six shoe. Um, you know, if you're offering products, say you're selling um, trainers, you know, then you could have, say, a specific pair of trainers and they've been tagged because they bought them. Um, so you can see exactly in your list what they've gotten up to. You can see what tags are attached to them. So I like to use tags quite a lot. And the post send action is really good so that when something happens, um, you know, somebody signs up for something, could be a student, I could tag them as a student. And then once that sequence is finished, um, yeah, once that sequence is finished, then the very last one we can put, you know, if it was a course, then we could then change the tag, we could add a tag, and we could use a tag that says something like X student, so we know that they've completed the course and are not going through the course, okay? So the sequence goes out. When the email is sent out, it does a post send action. Now, in the marketing ones, it could be really good because you could have different products that you want to promote. Uh, so when people first join your list, you could say have product A that you want to pe people to market it to people. So you could have your, your welcome email and then that could send um, product A, you know, how do you know about product A? And if they don't buy it, it could send a follow up one that says, hey, you know what? Um, I've still got product A available to you. Um, and then once that email has been sent and you've kind of given up trying to offer them product A, you can move them into a different group that kind of promotes product B and that kicks off another sequence, another marketing sequence. And they could have three emails to try and get them to buy product B. And then if, they, if that finishes and you give up, then yeah, it, it moves on and say, well, what about product C? It's cheaper. It's, it's probably more beneficial for you. Um, so yeah, the post send actions can be really, really powerful uh, for, for, for actually moving people around in your segments automatically as well. Um, you'll see some examples of that in um, when we do the sequence examples uh, for the courses, um, for the marketing series, and for uh, preparing for an event. So you'll see those um, in more detail as well. Okay. So this is probably quite a complicated part of it. This is really getting into uh, you know advanced automation where. You're not just creating a sequence, but you're actually deciding how far the sequence goes. Um, you're filtering it down along the way as to who it goes to. You're creating automations within the sequence that moves people to other sequences. Um, we've got so many different triggers. It's really, really quite complicated. And you probably won't want to get into this too much until you've got a more, a, a bigger sort of product and service structure. Uh, a marketing thing that you want to do or you're running courses so you've got something a bit more complex for your, for your very basic offers you know get those set up first uh, and get used to those and then start building and adding new sequences as you go and make use of the filters the schedules the post send actions and of course the triggers as well okay um yeah there's some examples you can see later on some modules later on um which will hopefully make that more clearer for you as well okay